Salam, this is Meera Nair and you're watching Real Black. Lights, camera, action, it's on. New black film revolution born. Movers, shakers, big and little filmmakers. Let's make a movie today, see where it take us. Halle Berry, Denzel, and Jamie. Terrence Starr with Mike D and Spike Lee. Brand new filmmaker born every day. Put a camera in his hand and let him lead the way. Let me get an Oscar, let me get an Emmy. Hi, I'm black Big Sis, and filmmaker. welcome to Anybody Real Black you? TV. Filmmaker Mira Nair is probably best known to viewers as the visionary behind such films as Mississippi Masala, Kama Sutra, Monsoon Wedding, and her Oscar-nominated film, Salam Bombay. She recently came to Philadelphia in support of her latest film, The Namesake, which stars another recent guest, actor Cal Penn. I want you to come home next Saturday. Mom, I can't come home that weekend. Mom. You know he's willing to go on vacation with someone else's parents. Yeah, happy birthday. But not to see his own. Besides, what kind of a girl is called Max? Huh? Maybe it's a boy. My name is Meera Nair and I'm an independent filmmaker. I produce and direct my own films for, um, I don't know, more than 20, 30 years now. Um, and I've, um, I have three homes. I live in Kampala, Uganda, and I live in um, New York City and in New Delhi, India. Um, and uh, my sort of mantra in life is, in terms of my films, is if we don't tell our own stories, no one else will tell them. And so I make most of my work is uh, about people who look like us and putting them on screen and telling stories of our realities uh, and our dreams, uh, but doing it in a way that is very specific and local and all sort of inevitably and uh, luckily becomes universal. My new film is called The Namesake and it's based on a best-selling novel by Jhumpa Lahiri uh, uh, of the same title. Uh, and it's a 30-year saga uh, from the 70s till today in Manhattan uh, from about an uh, Indian family, a young professor and his wife who leave Calcutta in the 70s and come to New York City uh, where it is hard to adjust after their network of family and friends in, in Bengal and uh, how they have adjust to this American life and have their children and their young son is called Gogol, played by Cal Penn and who is of course overtly American. Ma, this is Maxine. Max, this is my mother. Hello, Ashima. It's so nice to finally meet you. And it's this conflict between the two generations, uh, as well as a kind of dramatic mystery as to the peculiarity of his, the son's name, Gogol Ganguly. We later find out why the father named him Gogol, um, because of, uh, of, a, of a book by Nikolai Gogol, the Russian writer, who if, at, at a point in his youth saved his life in a sense. And so this film uh, is about, uh, you know, a love of books as well. Uh, the fact that if you, uh, uh, you know, reading a book can transport you without moving an inch. Similarly, I like to think of my film as uh, uh, taking you on a journey that uh, you cross between India and America without moving an inch. And um, it's a universal tale, I like to think, uh, about millions of us who have left one home for another and who seek to preserve our own voices and our identity in the midst of a country that is not ours. I think the the task of a director is to make, uh, firstly have something to say and then to uh, make everyone bloom, uh, you know, the people who are around you, from the actors to the team, uh, to take you further into making what your intention is as clear as possible. But my feeling, I, I like dense films, I like a, a sort of circus of life, I love the ensemble in my films and my feeling is very much to uh, have every scene and every frame 
uh, do more than one thing at every given moment. Uh, it propels the action, it increases the layers of the story. So that's just my personal style. My belief is if we don't tell our own stories, no one else will tell them. And uh, I, um, I am tired of having our realities, if they are ever told at all, but made by people who don't uh, belong in them. Um, and uh, I live, for instance, in East Africa, and I'm tired of Africa being represented by people in a very general way, usually white folks in the center of these large epics that are based in Africa. Um, and, you know, you don't even know which country you're in. They always call it the Africa continent, you know, as opposed to Uganda or Kenya or Tanzania or whatever. And uh, so with that in mind, I s started a, a film school called Maisha in, in Kampala, Uganda about three uh, years ago uh, with the mantra, if you don't tell your own stories, no one else will. And we give about 25 fellowships a year to students from Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda and um, uh, Rwanda, as well as uh, students from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. And we bring together great writers and directors from all over the world, from Bollywood to Nigeria to Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, have this sort of boot camp for cinema for about three to four weeks every summer uh, in order to create a craft of great excellence, of, 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 and, uh, of allowing young people to uh, tell their stories and tell the dignity and power of, of where we live on the screen. Uh, so, um, and without apologies, you know, without sort of cobbling it together, doing it at the best level that they can. Uh, and it's, it's in the continent, it's, it's almost impossible to get this kind of training, you know, except for South Africa, it doesn't really exist. And, um, and I think that it's about time that the dignity and, and, and power of those, those countries come on screen and made by those who live there rather than those who live out there. I believe that, you know, my work is to make films and your work is to <laughs> proclaim about them. I don't, you know, I don't really make it my business to uh, think in grandiose terms. Um, and so my work is just to keep on working and to um, keep bringing these stories to our lives and to tell them as excellently as possible and to make it not feel like homework, you know, to make it feel like a journey that I take you on. And in the process, you realize that, you know, those whom you thought of as the other are actually as human as you and me. I'm sure you're asking yourself right now, what exactly is Real Black? Real Black is a Philadelphia-based production company dedicated to promoting African-American film. In addition to the show, we also host two film screenings per month here in the city. You can check out our website to join our mailing list or look for our full page ad each month in Rolling Out Weekly. Here's a clip from one of our upcoming shows. The Jumper, a regular on the comedy club circuit, reported to be between 25 and 35 years old and said to have been depressed. Everybody's looking at you, man. It's like they saying, you know, be funny, be funny, be funny. Getting heckled comes with the territory. Talk about they mamas, they daddies, and they clothes. Dude, that ain't me, man. I can't do that. How you expect me to get a girlfriend with your hand halfway up my ass? <laughs> Are you still planning on leaving? What the left for me here? Son, you know how many people try to go out to Hollywood to be a star? I was at the store the other day. I was at the supermarket. You want something to drink? You know they free for the comedians. Oh, no, I don't drink, man. This next guy, you probably bought a bag of weed and a fish sandwich from him at the local beauty parlor. Put your hands together for TD, True Dog. True Dog. Yeah, that speaks the truth, dog. Prison. I just got out. I got a lot of material from being inside. Straight out of Brooklyn, New York City. Give it up for DD Dee Calvin. My first time being out on my own. What do you know about acting? I acted like it was okay when your boyfriend was sneaking in my room. Stop! Don't you go there! Put your hands together for Mr. Bo Clark. I'd like to say hi to my wife, who's, uh, she's here tonight. You got a child and a wife to think about. You want to be a movie star? Yes, exactly. What's wrong with you? Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> so silly. Forgot about your wife? Look, Dee Dee is just a friend, okay? She's the one that got me this gig. Stay the hell away from my husband! We're going on tour together. Are you going too? Yes, right. <laughs> Red, you're slipping, man. I'm not my father. You think you in control, but you not. I want to fly away! <laughs> You need someone in this town to guide your career. It'd be a rough place, rough people. God! What am I supposed to do? The cat stole my act! You do what you want to do all the time. It's not gonna suck itself. Rex, let me explain! You're sucking the life out of me! Secrets and lies. Secrets and lies. Now that's comedy. That's comedy. Hello, I'm Monica Peters, and you're watching Real Black. Tonight we're at the red carpet premiere of Perfect Stranger, starring Halle Berry, Bruce Willis, and Giovanni Ribisi. Everyone has secrets. Bro, wait up. Grace. But not everyone. You'll never believe who I met online. Knows how to keep them. And his wife has no idea. You threatened to go to my wife? Answer me! It's Grace. She's missing. Oh my God. <gasps> Grace. Now, it's up to one reporter. I saw Grace a few days ago. She wanted me to chase down Harrison Hill. He owns the biggest ad agency in New York City. To everybody at Victoria's Secret. To expose his secrets. I would love, love, love to get my hands on the rest of these emails. Bro, well, this is Harrison Hill. If he wanted somebody dead, he wouldn't do it himself. I mean, that's just the first he of all. She was stalking the guy. She probably even went to his house. Hi, Giovanni. Welcome Hi. to Real Black. First, I want to say we absolutely love you in Boiler Room. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a fun movie to do. It was a while back. So tell us about the character that you're playing in Perfect Stranger. Um, I play Miles Haley, who works with Rowena Price, Halle Berry's character, at a newspaper. And he's kind of like the uh, Iago Machiavellian character in the film, where he, he, uh, he gets off by being mischievous and deviant. And uh, he, he kind of has a crush on Halle's character, which later you find out it's a lot deeper than just that. So. Yeah. Okay, so he's got anti-spyware on his computer. There's a big freaking sign that says stop in the name of Spyrid. Spyrid? Oh, he's definitely hiding something. There was a leak, so they probably went into lockdown. But what do I do now? He's asking for a password. Uh, it's new. Look, look, I, yeah, I can get it in, but it'll take a few minutes. Just just take the flash drive out. We'll do it later, all right? I'm sorry. Sorry? What you can say is sorry. Well, I don't... Well, tell me something. <gasps> what attracted you to this role? Um, it was it was at first um, the the opportunity to work with James Foley, who's the director who I'm such a fan of, from from Glen Gary Glenn Ross to At Close Range, and um, and and it was that, and then and then basically you know our first discussion of the character, we, we uh, it was written as being this guy who's kind of frumpy and introverted and and uh, this like cliche sort of internet guy, but then we, we we wanted to go the exact opposite direction, and I just we just seemed to gel. Hi, Hallie. 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 Hi, Hallie. My name is Monica Peters with Real Black. It's so nice to see you here. You must be excited to be in Philadelphia. I am. I'm really excited to be here. It's been a long time. I was here a long, long time ago. Like somebody reminded me today when I did a movie called Strictly Business. So it's good to be back. Uh, what attracted you to this role? The character. You know, always, usually for me, it's the character and the director, and this time it was both. The character that I never play, and a character that plays a character within a character within a character, which was new. And James Foley, the director, was someone I admire and respect. <laughs> and, and, okay, rehearsing, fire. This is Real Black's highest award that we give to actors and actresses. We want to present to you our Huggy Bear Award. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'm Halle Berry, and you're watching Real Black. 
Perfect Stranger opens everywhere on Friday, April the 13th. If you enjoy a sexy thriller and endings with a twist, we encourage you to go out and see this one. We'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who participated in our first weekend field trip in support of Pride and I Think I Love My Wife. Over 30 people pledged to attend the 7 o'clock screening of either film. Afterwards, many of us met at the Ruby Buffet restaurant on Columbus Boulevard where we discussed the film and gave away prizes, including a copy of Spike Lee's When the Levees Broke DVD, courtesy of HBO Video and a poster personally signed by Chris Rock. You want to be a part of the fun? Be sure to join our mailing list by visiting our website www.realblack.com and one lucky person will win a brand new DVD like this one. I call fear false evidence appearing real. And part of the reason why I'm here is because I'm part of the entertainment business. And what I started to notice as I was speaking to, to young men, young women, and our young people, is that the business that I was a part of was effectively destroying the self-esteem of our youth. It all is a, is a journey in the process, and there's not one point where each piece relates to the, to the next. It wasn't just, okay, social responsibility, I need to do this because I'm this. Because it was creating false evidence that appears real. That's the whole business, that's what we do now. We create false evidence that appears real, and what does it do? It leads to people wanting things that aren't real. You know, whether I was, I'd probably, even if I wasn't an actor, I'd probably be doing something similar. I have a little brother in the Big Brother program. When he's nine years old, he's 14 now. When he was nine, he looked up at me and said, Hill, I can't be happy unless I have a platinum Rolex and a Bentley with 20-inch rims. That's a nine-year-old. That's the way he was actualizing his happiness. Now, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against nice things. I think nice things are great. If you read my book, I love nice things. However, I only believe in nice things if you don't have to go into debt to have them. I don't think it's more about what led. Certainly, I could look back and say that my, my grandparents and my parents were, were definitely about helping others and all those things. And I think those things had an effect. But it's, it's a much smaller idea, a much smaller question. It goes to, again, aggressively following intuitive notions. How many of us sit back and say, I don't know what I really want or how I want to go about doing something, so I'm just going to sit here and wait? Rather than really actively listening to our intuition and to the intuitive voices that we all have and say, I'm going to make an affirmative choice, but be malleable enough to, if that choice maybe leads us in a direction that may not be the best, we can make a different choice. And as we put one foot in front of the other, we're able to make different choices down a journey or a path rather than being stagnant and waiting for life to make choices for us. Hey, go marry this dude over me. Shh. You don't want to do this. I do. I don't. Premium is, is, is a film about a young man played by Dorian Misik who uh, is an actor who it works at a gas station filling up folks with premium gas. And Zoe Saldana is his ex-girlfriend who's engaged to my character. They live together, they're engaged, and they're about to be married, and she bumps into him. And it's just it's a film about the choices we make in life and the people who we could have or should have perhaps ended up with, but for some reason we don't. On the back of my book, there's, a, there's an excerpt. Uh, it is from letter number three, being raised by a single parent. And it reads, Dear young brother, it might seem easier to close your eyes and ears and act like you're just passing time, but you're not. Your life's not. It might seem easier to ignore the fact that the choices for your life are yours to make, but get this, not making any choices is making a choice. I live at home with my mom and her boyfriend, who I wish she never had. Do you ever think about uh, getting your own place? Ma! Independent film is, is vital to me because it's really the lifeblood of giving new people opportunity to express their voice. I think what hurts most independent films has, is oftentimes, and particularly first-time filmmakers, is oftentimes the cast that they end up with. With digital technology, um, people can make more films and, and tell their voice. The, the, the negative side of that is that people who don't deserve or shouldn't be making a film yet are making films. So you see the market flooded with more independent films, and then people start everything gets lumped into a, a category of not being that great. They don't allow their scripts to, to take, to, to be in front. Sh the script is the key. The script is the key. You can, you know, 
Bad actors can take a good script and make it bad. That can happen. But good actors can't take a bad script and make it good. You cannot, you cannot turn water into wine in a film. You just can't do it. And so the script is the key. And that's why I look for great scripts. How can you start talking about the HIV epidemic? How can you start talking about the value of education and foundation building? How can you start talking about having a positive and valuable relationship to money and the way you deal with money? Because all of these are future-based activities and ideas. And if you don't feel that you're worthy of a future, then what do you care about whether the girl gets pregnant or not? It doesn't matter. What do you care if you com commit a crime? Because it doesn't matter. The consequences don't matter because you don't feel that you're worthy. And so I felt it was incumbent upon me to spend time figuring out how I could use whatever modicum of platform or voice that I had to counteract that. Because, because I had to look at myself in the mirror and say, if I'm benefiting in any way from an industry that is involved in this activity, I need to use the same power and influence the industry gives me to try to counteract it. And hopefully, hopefully if I do it effectively, it will show others who have even a bigger voice than I do that they can do the same. I will never do a project that is demeaning to us. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't play ne um, negative roles, so-called negative roles, because as an actor, I want to play diverse roles. And so, you know, someone said to me, they, I heard what you said. You said you never played a negative role. You played a drug dealer and in too deep. And I said, you didn't listen to me. I said, the project, you know, it, the example I would use, if, the, if that script ended with me and LL Cool J, he's my boss and the drug dealer, with two bottles of Cristal sitting in a hot tub, and it ended with saying, dealing drugs is good, you know, I wouldn't have done it. But it ends with me and LL going to prison and Omar Reps gets the girl. In the end, he's the good, you know, he's the guy that was doing the right thing for the community. And so, you know, as, as simplistic and, you know, as that movie is, it still sends a subliminal message. So it's more about the project than the role. I've had arguments with Sean Combs, you know, Diddy, <laughs> before, about this very issue. Because I say, Sean, how come you don't ever talk about the fact that you spent two and a half years at Howard University? How come you don't ever talk about the fact that after you left Howard, you went to Andre Harrell at Uptown Records and said, I will work for you for free because I want to learn this skill. Read this. Now listen, this is where we're going here. That's foundation building. And this is the shame of it all. He doesn't use his voice to talk about that journey because it's much better and cooler to say, I went from the corner to the limo overnight. My goals are to continue to develop as an artist and to continue to work with other artists that are committed to, to doing great things. And you know, hopefully by the end of those 20 years, you look back and you say, I have a body of work or a legacy of work that if people played it in a string of, of, of projects, it's something that people can look at and say, wow, that affected me in this way or that affected me in that way. Premium is a funny and intelligent romantic comedy starring Doreen Missick, Hill Harper, and Zoe Saldana and is now available on DVD from Code Black Entertainment. We're going to close with Philly hip hop legend Schooly D performing two of his hits. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks.
no more than me. I never had a party and I did cry. I never met a dude that was getting the world. I never met a dude that was a dude. I never been stopped in your feet. I think it's all the fuck with it. Who you need? I said it's 